This is Mrs. Purvis. Her hobby is making pincushions out of old tennis balls. How oh, very interesting. And now I want to introduce Mrs. Wilmot. Mrs. Where's Mrs. Wilmot? Mrs. Wilmot? Miss Baker. Where's Miss Baker? And Miss Vice. Where's Miss Vice? Something must have happened to make them run away. Today of all days. I said the police girl. Dial 999. Of course, I told them this morning about their transfers. Were they being moved? Well, overcrowded. Mrs. Wilmot was being sent to Derby and Miss Vice to Swindon. Hello, police? We've lost three of our ladies. <laughs> What do we do now? I'm in such a furious temper, I haven't begun to think of that yet. Darby. Swindon. And leaving me behind. Aren't you? We've shared a room for three years. Expecting me to go in with that Mary Adams who keeps kippers mm. under her mattress. A retreat for retired governesses. I've never retreated in all my life. Advance. Which way? Forward. What about all your relations, Rosie? Isn't there anyone who could put us up for the night? Well, the Sydney P in Oxton, but she's expecting and he drinks. There's Maureen and Ron, they're at Taunton, but they've only got a caravan, and last I heard was one wheel had come off and Ron had got goldstones. You've no one, Mabel? Only a cousin, and she's rather distant, twice removed and in Sumatra. What about your cousin? The one with a dress shop in London. Stony broke, poor dear. Last letter I had from her, she said she expected to be bankrupt for Christmas unless something turned up. We turned up and it make things worse. Now, look, madam, we've informed all patrol cars. Have you dragged we... the lake? Have you searched the quarry? Miss Vice should have had her pills at four. And Mrs. Wilmot's gone without her coat. The river. Suppose they fell off the bridge and got carried away. Oh. Area oh. B, search scale four. All available personnel. <laughs> and chips off the news of the world. <laughs> well, what's funny about this? You know what they used to call you at the home behind your back? The Duchess. You wasn't a Duchess, was you? Of course not. But believe it or not, I used to live in a palace. My husband was financial advisor to an Indian prince. But the prince was thrown out and so were we. Oh, it's happened to a lot of people. I'm not complaining. You don't suppose they're looking for us? Well, there's bound to be a search, and we're wandering abroad without visible means of support. They can run you in for that. Come on. Savings 
before dark. Oh, and Met's not too good. Fog patches in the channel. Good luck. an agreeable death. Can you swim, Rosie? Yes. At Oxton Baths, they used to call me fishy. Mabel? Well, I haven't since Fear Ritz in 1938, but I used to have quite a serviceable side stroke. Mm. Oh, we'll get ashore somehow. Some shore, somewhere. And if we can't do anything else, we'll tell fortunes on the beach. Madame Dora, palmist. <laughs> I used to decorate little boxes with shells. There ought to be a market for those at a seaside resort. Three able-bodied women like us. Well, you can't tell me there isn't a use for us somewhere. Now, you pull this lever and the thing blows up. Товарищ капитан. Вижу дрейфующую лодку. Где? Три человека на борту. Посмотрим. Да, моторная лодка. Ошиб! Ошиб! Не сей! Огой! Огой! Хилл! Хилл! Это вы! Это вы! Look, fashion. Oh, next stop, Siberia. And me with my summer drawers on. Thank you so much. <laughs> The peoples of Soviet Russia hold out their hands in friendship and offer fraternal greetings to the people of Great Britain. Uh, thank you for saving us, you good man. We very sorry we ran out of the... Uh, Essence. Benzina. Juice. The peoples of Soviet Russia hold out their hands in friendship. You have a very good English accent, Captain. Oh, oh, <laughs> no, yeah. Where is this ship going? <laughs> have, have you finished fishing? The people of Soviet Russia hold out their hand in friendship. The peoples of Great Britain hold out their hand in friendship and offer fraternal greetings to the peoples of Soviet Russia. <laughs> Charles Dickens. Yes. And you have toast on. Oh, oh, I saw it. Oh, 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 His oh, 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 great book, War and Peace. Mm. War. Boom, boom, boom. Oh. And peace, peace. How does one say peace? Peace, a dove, dove of peace. Go, go, go. 
It is a fine day, a wet day, a feast day, a Christmas day. It certainly is. And now, please, can we have some breakfast, dinner, tea, supper, elevenses? Come on, boy. Stop drawing. Stop drawing. Please, please, please. Please, please. Oh, ladies. No words, Payeli. Gigeri. You give me your name. Rose. R for raspberry. O for... Uh, well, if we give them our names, they'll send a message over the wireless. And we'll be put up on the first British ship we pass. Yes, and taken back to the home. Что такое? Эй, товарищ капитан, а может быть, они политические беженцы, а? О, политические беженцы? Возможно. А, you no wish, give me your name. That's right. Da. I just remembered that's Russian for yes. Da. You no wish go back England, da? Da. 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 You want... Uh, asylum. Asylum? Oh, no. That's what we just ran away from. We go Murmansk. We take you. Russia give you asylum. No, thank you. Niet. I just remember that's the Russian for no. Niet. 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 Niet, you don't. I'm going to get off now. Oh, I must. 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 I must
А, все равно распорядитесь. Шлепка номер один, готовься к спуску. Вы тут не пропадете. Здесь за скалами жилое место есть. Это не шпата. А вот вам багаж. Thank you. Ну, до свидания. Хорошего. which would indicate a romance language and a people who recognize some kind of God, but whether they've yet been converted to Christianity remains to be seen. Judging by him, they have been. <laughs> Whatever they are, I'm afraid they're not Church of England. What a picture. It's like something on a calendar. Oh, it's the kind of place I've always wanted. Let's have a look. Come on. Let's go in. Should we, do you think? There's no one about. <laughs> I'm not opening that one, Mark of the Loch Ness Monster. Oh, Salvia Rosea. Bella Tricola. Oh, how I long to do some weeding. Doesn't look as if anyone's lived here for years. And that, I suppose, is the uh, <clears throat> bit drafty on a windy night. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Morning. Are you a photographer? Oh, only of birds. Is uh, this a good place for birds? It's the only nesting place in the whole of Europe with a green guillemot. Europe. Uh, can you tell us what this place is called? I believe the locals call it Paddy Pat Murphy's. Oh, sounds Irish. Oh, there's nowhere more Irish than Inishfada. Inishfada. Of all the Irish islands, it's the least civilized and the least spoiled. Irish island. Now we know. I wonder... Could two of you possibly give me a hand for a moment? It's just up there. Oh, only too delighted. Come on, Oh, Rosie. splendid. This is where I need your help. They, um, they can't count, you know. The people? Hmm? Oh, no, no, the birds. If three go in and two come out, they don't understand that one has stayed behind. You see? So come in with me, would you? 
Can you manage? Yes, I'm afraid it's a bit crowded. I'll have a more the merrier. Ah, there we are, just for the job. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I wonder if one of you could possibly get my exposure meter out of my left hand pocket. I can't quite reach it. <laughs> what on? I don't think I can either. Oh, uh, can you draw yourself in a bit, uh, Mabel? I'm uh, trying my uh, best. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, please, please, I'm so sorry, but I'm rather ticklish. I think I can manage to thank you. I'd like him so very much indeed. Uh, now, if you two go now, he'll think that I've gone as well, you see. Uh, I shall be up here for two or three days, so don't worry if you don't see me about the place. Uh, oh, and thank you so very much. This place is running with them. I just remembered we haven't any matches. This too? Where did you get it, Rosie? On the boat. Must have dropped out of the captain's pocket. What a view! And somewhere there must be a beach in the village. If <laughs> only we, if only we... <laughs> What were you doing up there? We heard someone come in the house, so we ran up the chimney. Don't run away. Do you know who this house belongs to? It is empty always. Nobody comes here but us. Would you sell me that wood for a penny? If it's a fire you're needing, turf burns better. Could you get us some? It'll cost you sixpence a basket. We'll have four, and no short measure. <laughs> Those nice Russians have given us. Ah, frog spawn, caviar, very nourishing. Mm, vodka. We keep it for emergencies. It would rouse the dead. We can hardly settle down here as though the place belonged to us. Well, we've got to spend the night somewhere. What about the village? I have twelve and sixpence. Ten and six when I bought the turf. I've got four shillings and a halfpenny, not even enough for one mm. bed and break. Rosie? Two pounds twelve. How on earth did you get that? Pressing button B in the call box at the home every morning after breakfast. <laughs> it seems so absurd. These three cottages, exactly what we need, belonging to no one. I'd just love to get down on my knees and scrub the place out. Why don't we? <laughs> He couldn't be after us, could he? It might be a detective from Dublin. certainly is. You're not from this island? No. We were just looking at the cottages. Oh, not with a view to buying them, I hope. We were interested. Ah, well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, ladies, but I've just bought them myself. Ah, nice of someone to get a fire going for me. Yes, nothing that but a plaster and paint can't put right. 
and the setting. Oh, perfect. Uh, did you buy the place without seeing it? I always had a fancy to retire here. I've been 50 years in America, so I, I wrote a solicitor in Dublin to buy me the first place that was going on the island, and well, here we are, this is it. Do you suppose he wants all three cottages? We can ask him. Ah, look, do you mind holding that there for me? That's it. I'm going to knock all these three into one, make a grand little property. I'll be able to spread myself. Will you be living here all on your own? Oh, all on my own, yes. You come here now, look. Hold it there. Because I've no relatives left, you see, and no friends this side of the Atlantic. Will you be all right? All right. Why not? Aren't you a little uh, advanced in years to let her alone? <laughs> if I may say so, ma'am, without offence, you're no chicken yourself. <laughs> Yes, I'm 72, never had a day's illness in my life, and now the doctors tell me there's something wrong with my heart. <laughs> They've given me these... these nitroglycerine pills in case I pass out. <laughs> if I don't pass out, I expect I'll blow up. Mm. It seems to me to come to the same thing. Yes, I must get that thatch fixed, and I don't think about the drains. Uh, but who cares about drains with a view like that? Will you look at the light on that sea and the green of that hill? No green there is like an Irish hill, no blue like an Irish sea, no laugh in the world like an Irish laugh, no girl like Mary McCree. Oh, please don't stop. Oh, but you've a very fine voice. Are you a professional singer? No. No, some people told me I should take it up professionally. No, I was a builder out in America. I used to oblige and Gaelic dinners and such. Ah, no St. Patrick's Night Ball was complete without Joseph McDonough. <laughs> and you know, when I come back here and see the green of the hills and the Irish eyes and all, all the things I've been singing about all these years, it, I'm sorry, ladies, it, it just gets me, that's all. We quite understand. Only natural. Would it make you feel better to sing a bit more? Something a bit more cheerful. It's the doctors. They forbid me to say. How terrible for you. A man with a heart the size of mine, and now they say it's enlarged, and I can't sing. Will they let you whistle? <laughs> I tell you one thing. When I get up in the morning and see the sun rising over Ireland, there's not a doctor in the world could stop me singing. Not if I drop dead in the middle of a verse. <laughs> well, ladies, I, I'm sorry you were disappointed in the property. But I wish you a pleasant crossing back to the mainland. When does the next boat go? Oh, it's not till Friday. Oh, what a pity. I chartered a motorboat for myself. If I'd known you were here, well, you could have had a lift back. Oh, never mind now. Goodbye. Back to the mainland. We don't even know if we've got enough for the fare. I oh, know. I'm going to ask him if he wants a daily help. He'll hardly need three daily helps. he wants his mending done, won't he? And his laundry. I could do shorthand once. Perhaps he needs a secretary. He wants someone to look after him, to make a fuss of him. Poor old man, all alone on a desert island with a dicky ticker. Ah, boy. What have you got there? Turf, is it? I love the smell of a peat fire. Now, look, just go and take that and put it on the hearth. Your wife said she'd give me sixpence a basket for it. Oh, my, my wife said that, did she? Ha, well, I go one better. Look, there's a shilling a basket. And tell my other two wives to make up the fire. A little Irish boy with eyes of blue. Should you? Ah, perhaps you're right. And you shouldn't be out in this wind uh, without your coat uh, on. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. Feeling all right now? Yes. Wouldn't like to sit down and put your feet up? Oh, no, no. Mr. McDonough, I was wondering... Hush. Do you see what you're seeing out there? No. It is Liscannon Bay. Oh, the times I brought tears to the eyes of an audience singing of Liscannon Bay, and here it is. By golly, I'll sing if it kills me. 
I met my love one dreamy summer's day down by the shore of old Cannon Bay. Our eyes were blue. They stole my heart away. What? Go oh, golly. Mr. McDonough. Oh, the doctors oh. were right. Fetch me pills. Fetch me pills. Take plenty of the elder meals, no. Here we are. Come on, quick. Water, get water. And the vodka. Yes. Where's the vodka? Never mind. Come on. He's gone. Where? He must have fallen. He's gone. All but he's at. Help! 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 Oh, do something. Help! Help! There's nothing we can do. We must fetch a doctor. We don't know if there is one, and what could he do? The police. Don't you start fetching them. They wouldn't have been in the house five minutes before they say we pushed the old geezer. You mustn't call him an old geezer when he's just gone to meet his maker, Rosie. I think we should all stand for a moment in silent tribute. <laughs> What did he say then? He said, here's a shit in the basket and go and tell my other two wives to make up the fire. Lord bless us. A harem on the island. This is the contract for the sale of the cottages drawn up by the solicitor in Dublin. He had no relatives or friends, he said, this side of the Atlantic. Even if we do tell someone he's dead, I don't quite see whom they could inform. If we told just one lie, we could live here in peace. What? Pinch a house. Three houses, my dear. One for each of us. What's the lie? If we said we were his nieces, for instance, who's to say we're not? The solicitor. He's in Dublin. The contract signed. As he has no relatives, we wouldn't be doing any harm to anyone. What about the children they saw him come? Where would we say he'd gone to? He came, he went away. Back to Dublin. Back to America. Uncle was always a great one for traveling. His Christian name was Joseph. Uncle Joe. <laughs> this is a quiet and convenient place they've chosen. He can go from door to door and no one to see. Do you know the name for them in America now? Call girls. I know just how we lay out the garden. Pink Celebricia under the window. No, no. Nicotina, night scented stock. Pink's over there. With a sheet and a sundial. And round at the back, we can hang out the washing. Our bag's this one. I don't think that's fair at all. I think we should draw lots. I'm the eldest. I choose first. No, I won't. I'll have this one. It's nearer the what's its name. I think you're being perfectly childish. If you snap, you'll choose last. Ah, oh, what's the use? We're forgetting. How can we live in an empty house? Of course not. Not even a bed. What's this? We'll be having a blooming coach party next. We'll tell them this is private property. Come on. Good day to you, ma'am. Is this Mr. McDonough's? Yes. We had a fine day for the crossing, and I don't think you'll find anything is broken. Anything of what broken? Uh, the furniture, ma'am, that Mr. McDonough bought in Galway, if you'll tell us where you want it put. Up here. Very good, ma'am. And don't forget to wipe your feet. All right, ma'am, we will. And how long will a man who's taken three wives be content with three? He'll be looking for others. And what ideas will that put into the heads of all young girls? And what ideas does it put into your head, Mary? None that haven't been there since I was 12. Let Getaway put together your ultimate holiday item.
in stock? I would not. Uh, just what I need. This way, please. If music be the food of love, play on. Here, how many of these are there? Only one, ma'am. Don't tell the others. I won't. <laughs> Joe's gone back to America when all his furniture's arrived and he's nicely settled in. Simple. He stays for a few weeks and then he goes. But if nobody sees him about the place... He's ill, confined to his bed. Then one day a boat comes and takes him away. Where is he now? Tucked up in bed. He's quite happy. He enjoys reading and uh, doing crosswords. And playing the harp. I hope he does, considering where he's gone to. <laughs> Well, who'd like a nice cup of tea? Oh, have we got tea? And milk. Two tins of it. It's about all we have got. Dear Uncle Joe, just like a man. He's ordered about half a hundred weight of tea and three cases of Irish whiskey. He always likes a cup of tea about four o'clock when he wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> And we didn't do it. My grandfather was a missionary. He used to win the friendship of savages with gifts of beads and mirrors. I was once in a riot in Chattanooga. The only thing to do is to look them straight in the eye. And if anyone throws anything... Yes? Duck. Good afternoon. Did you want to see our uncle? 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 It is a shame to have broken your window, but should that consume be put right? There was talk in the village of a harem up here. But be James, here's scarlet women. I have a blue behind on me like an ape. Welcome to Inish, Father. Please, God, you'll stay a long time and come back again. That's very kind of you. Now, the kettle's just on the fire. Will you come in and have a cup of tea? Oh, tea. Oh, 
quiet now, quiet. We mustn't disturb Mr. McDonough. Oh, you needn't worry. He's a sound sleeper. You mind if I take a look at this? Uh, an actress? Oh, yes, certainly. They're set on going to America, like all the rest. What leave this island? There'll be no land for us to farm after we're married, and we can't get married. We save enough money for our passage. Oh, I've got mine, all right. Fifty-five pounds. But now I have to save for Mary's. Why, look. Still a great country, America. Look up. A whole page. There are about 150 million inhabitants in an area of approximately 3 million square miles. Oh, it'll be a great change for Minnie Spanish, surely. The principal cities are New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Detroit, Baltimore, Cleveland, St. Louis, San Francisco. In the warm weather, tea doesn't satisfy a thirst. It does not. And that John Patrick's is a fine whiskey. But it's beautiful. I've never seen anything quite like it before. Did you do it all yourself? I mean, where did you get the pattern? <laughs> we'll just make it up as we go along. And uh, Mabel, just look at this. It starts with a simple cable stitch, then the two cables cross. You knit into the loop below the next stitch. On the left-hand needle. And then you knit into the stitch and pass the first stitch over the second. I'd like one of these to send to my cousin. She has a dress shop in London. It's just what she needs to give the business a Philip. I've one ready now, if you like to come to the village in the morning. Excuse me. Pearl one, knit three, slip three. Pearl one, slip two, knit two, slip two. Fire! 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 Congregation is extinguished. John Patrick's Irish whiskey, 12 years old. Uh, it would have been a pity if it had exploded. Thank you for putting it out. It might have been disastrous. A fire uh, just when we moved in. Uh, uh, would any of you men like a drink? I wish it. I suppose there's none of us would say no to a small drop. <laughs> <laughs> Would Mr. McDonough be rested now? Should we ask him to join us? I'll see what he says. Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe, dear. He's still sleeping soundly as a babe. We'd best not disturb him. Health and long life to you. Land without rent to you. A child every year to you. <laughs> <laughs> and may you die in Ireland. Nonsense! Nonsense! Sure, it's a just stand, a glass in your hand, a drop of the golden crater. It's good for a dream, will broaden your beam, to the end of man you must cater. On a whiskey galore, you're never a bore, your muscles are proudly picking. So it weakens your knees and you're seeing them threes. Be glad you're alive and kicking. Alive, oh, alive, oh, the devil is in. You'll never go far, not having a jar, it'll give you the pace of lightning. He's born with a curse that hasn't a thirst, you're a fella like that is frightening. You're very good health, you're so your belt, there's cannons that go for pagan. I'll finish the night with a brother of a fight, to prove you're alive and king. Alive, oh, alive, oh, the temple is here, she Alive, oh, alive, oh, all alive and king. Don't envy the crank with gold on the bank or how much it's his only money. Far better by half the fellow who laugh if he's broke every day is sunny. So just look around, there's things to be found, all nature is yours for picking. You've nothing to pay, it's there every day. 
Wie gleich schon ein Leibenkäfchen. Ein Leibe, ein Leibe, so dickelig wie sie liegen. Ein Leibe, ein Leibe, ohne Leibenkäfchen. Ohne Leibe, ohne Leibe, Leibe. Everybody welcome, now is a Leibisch in der Reihe. The men of this island can't hold their drink. I put two of them to bed, and I've had the dickens of a time with another who wanted to swim to Chicago. How's Uncle Joe this morning? He had a very good night. Uncle Joe! What? Uncle Joe! We forgot him! Perhaps they looked in his room! Oh, oh heavens! Oh, my head. Oh, dear. Good morning. Oh, good yes. morning. Uh, has our uncle asked for anything? A oh, double a sound from him. Oh, it is a terrible thing we've done. We've drunk two cases of his whiskey. What will he think of the people of Inish Father? Oh, don't let that worry you. He's not in a condition to drink a great deal himself. That's no matter. We must make it up to him somehow. Oh, it is in a terrible state now, that thatch on the roof. And the walls, too, could do with a good coat of lime wash. Wouldn't it be more convenient for the four of you to have a door knocked here and there from room to room? Oh, it certainly would. We'll be back in an hour and put the place in order. We'll move everything outside, uh, if your uncle wouldn't mind packing up his belongings. Where will we put uncle? He could go for a walk. He'd come in for meals. Well, they begin to suspect it, they don't see him about. I've got it. Three in, two out. What? He's bad watching. <laughs> left of it. You go down to the village, and when you come back, you'll see what we've done. Can you tell us the way to the shop? If I tell you the way to that, you'll know the way to everything. Over the hill and straight on. Who wants to buy something for breakfast? Come on, I could eat a horse. I could eat the whole Grand National with the Derby thrown in for pudding. have three pounds, six shillings and sixpence. And a halfpenny, ten peaches. Oh, how much do you suppose those dried apricots would be? Right, we could have a nice rice pudding. Mm. Good morning, ladies. I saw you coming over the hill, and I said to myself they'd be going to the shop, but there's nothing else that way but the graveyard. And please God, they'll not be going there for a good while yet. Here's your English father's sweater. I hope it's what you wanted for your friend. And oh, all. but it's beautiful. <laughs> how much do we owe you? Three pounds is what we usually charge. That's most reasonable. Rosie, have you got two pounds ten? Yes, but we were... Give it to Mrs. O'Flaherty, will you? But we were... Rosie? Thank you, ladies. And if there's any more you want, I'll be happy to do them. Martin Bar. Martin Bar. Head of the ah. Huh. Have you gone crackers? How are we going to eat? Yeah, we've only got six and six between us. This sweater can be sold in London for ten guineas at least. Well, what's the use of us sitting here waiting for money to fall out of the skies? We've got to make it. Well, how can we make it when we're starving? You've heard of fair arm knitting, haven't you? And Shetland knitting? Well, what about Inish Fada knitting? Ooh. We can learn to do it ourselves. Well, you can knit. I'm going to buy breakfast. No, Rosie. We've got to post this first. It'll go off at once, but the steamer's just leaving. Uh, that'll be one and sixpence with the paper and the string. 
Have you a shilling, Rosé? Rosé? <laughs> Yeah, you take these. I'm going to do the shopping. Rosie, behave yourself. We'll do the shopping and you'll stay outside. Now, you've still got a shilling. May I have it? You take a dead blood from a blind spider, you would. It is a beautiful day. What can I do for you? Uh, we'll have uh, 14 pounds of potatoes and a loaf of bread. Please, God, you'll be with us a long time to enjoy it. We'd like to stay forever. this morning. Makes a change. Tea, Rosé? No milk. Finished. No sugar. You know there isn't. No salt. They were boiled in seawater. Quite delicious. Ah, good morning. I wonder if you've got something that'll open this. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, by the way, is that your uncle's hide up on the cliff? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, yes, he's a keen bird watcher. Oh, really? I, uh... Oh, the, the, that's the very thing. Yes, thank you very much. I'm going to make myself a, a sandwich lunch. Corned beef. And you know, if you mix it with a little pickles and some mustard, it's absolutely delicious. Ah, that's got it. Isn't that nice? <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I'll bring the key back, if I may. Oh, corned beef, pickles, mustard. What have we got for lunch today? Spuds again? This is the best place if you really want gold's eggs. We certainly do. They have an awful taste of fish. Oh, I'd love to taste fish. All right, then. going down there. You said you wanted gold's eggs, didn't you? I'll go. Dora, are you mad? We want the eggs, don't we? And I won't have these children risking their lives for us. You can't go. You're too old. That decides it. Come on, just check these notes, Mabel. Now then, over we go.
calm evening, is it not? <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> Won't you come in? <laughs> Uncle's never unpacked any of his things. I'm having to press all his trousers. Not a button on one of his pajamas. And where's the third of you this evening? Rosie? She went for a walk. Boston. That's where I'd like to go to, Boston. You know, sometimes I think, should I go there by myself? Help me. Or maybe in a year or six months, I can send you home enough money for your passage. A year or six months? I think, I think we ought to do it quick, like having a tooth out. One morning it'd wake up and I'd be gone and Don't then you could... are doing that now. I remember, it must be 50 years ago. A boy on the island ran off to America without a word to a soul. And because he went, there were one shot in his father's boat that night. And his father and two of his friends were drowned. All because that boy ran off at a time to suit himself. <sighs> he was a great singer of the old songs. Neil! Blow up the fire, Mabel! Dora, find me the biggest frying pan and the largest saucepan. I've been shopping. Well, I'll be going home now. Come on, the pair of you. Oh, don't go. You'll be having your supper. And if there's one thing I can't bear, it's another woman watching me cooking. Uh, good night, and uh, come again soon. Bye, Mary. Good night, you. How dare you? How dare you? When the people here have been so kind to us. You think I've pinched them, don't you? I'm surprised you should have such low minds. See that bit of paper? That's the bill, see? All honest and above board. Eight pounds? Well, how do you get a bit? Have you never heard of tick, credit, never, never? That's dishonest. You know perfectly well we can never pay the bill. Suppose we all three dies of starvation. Someone would have to pay our funerals, wouldn't they? You'll take it you all back. That's just a shop now. And if you think they could bury the three of us on eight pounds, coffins included, you're mistaken. I'm saving the money. I'll have nothing more to do with you, Rosie. No, neither will I. They do themselves well here, I must say. Nice back of bacon. And the eggs was only laid yesterday. Feel better? No, I feel worse. Worse than I felt at any time since we ran away. I love the people here and I don't like to cheat them. I don't mind asking for credit if I know that one day we can pay. We don't know that. And if I can only live by cheating, I'd soon to die. Well, I never heard her talk like that before. She's right. She makes me feel ashamed. Where's Uncle's gun? She took the gun. Dora! Well, what's she done? What's she done? Ah, pretty good shooting. One with each barrel. <laughs> <laughs> the telephone's ringing. The telephone. Oh, the telephone. All right, I heard you. Is that 
you, Maureen. Well, now, and how are things on the mainland? Oh, and it's a grand day here, too, thanks be to God. And a telegram? Thomas, a telegram! Put on your uniform! <laughs> meat with the ass. He's had a complaint in his stomach. For Mrs. Wilmot. Oh, I'll put Paddy Pat Murphy, for that's where she's staying. Top London fashion house into the ass tick over sample hand knitting. <laughs> I don't know what we were all worried about. We can live by shooting and fishing. What's the matter? These came while you were out. Post for uncle? To removal of household effects from Galway to Inishfada. Forty-two pounds, ten and sixpence. And this from the solicitor. To fees for professional services rendered, twenty-two guineas. And he even got the whiskey on tick. Three dozen, seventy pounds. Here we are. This will be the bailiffs. Are you Miss Dora Wilmot? Yes. Well, it's as well to be prepared, ma'am. What for? When the last one I delivered, it was a death, and the poor woman fell down in a dead faint on the doorstep. The last what you delivered? The one before that was to say that Mrs. Hernan's son had lost a leg on the railway. Well, see you on the We're bear. here. We've got the wool. We're all ready. Ready for what? You must have the telegram. Thomas! I was prepared in the lady in case it was bad news. Oh, come on, man. It's just good news for all of us. Well, now, where is it? I oh. couldn't have left it behind me, surely. It was from London, from someone called Ursula. That's my cousin, the one that has the dress shop. Oh, what was it now? Uh, top London Fashion House. That was it. Oh, here it is now. I knew I brought it. Top London Fashion House, enthusiastic your sample hand knitting. Can you supply earliest? 300 similar. Bus slices 32 to 36. Price to you, five pounds each. 300? We must put this on a business basis and organize it properly from the start. If we are efficient, we shall get repeat orders. Now, who is to take charge? You. Only if it is the will of the people. Hands up those who want me to take charge. Come on, you women at the back. Now put your hands up. Good. You will receive four pounds, ten shillings for each completed garment. Five pounds, it said. The other ten shillings will pay our salaries. Postage expenses. Uh, Rosie, you will be in charge of stamps and petty cash. Oh, do you think that'd be right? Yes, Rosie, I do. Any questions? Very well. Now, I shall want every woman and every sheep on the island. <laughs> <laughs> and creep up on her. Come on, come sheepy. on. Oh, sheepy, sheepy, sheepy. Come on. Now. Oh. You bloody silly lump of wool, you! <laughs> 
12 sweaters between us, I'll have the money from a passage. And then there'll be plenty of time for that kind of nonsense. I've waited for you for nearly a year already. Well, it's... Well, it's worse than waiting for your dinner on a cold day when you've had no breakfast. If you are half a man, you'd be knitting yourself. If... If I were half a man, I'd... That's uh, four dozen for the steamer today. Twenty-four pounds for us. I'm gonna buy myself a bottle of scent. Oh, no, you won't. We've Uncle's debts to settle first. Twenty-four pounds will just pay off the solicitor. Then we've only the bills for the removal and the whiskey and we're clear. All our worries will be over. Uh, good morning, ma'am. I wanted to see Mr. McDonough. Oh, and I, I, I'm afraid he's out. Shoot him. Fishing. Oh, that's a pity. I had to see him on official business. In the course of my duty, I've had various explosions in the neighborhood. I wondered if Mr. McDonough had a firearm license. Well, I'll ask him and see. Ah, that's very good of you, ma'am. And if he hasn't, please don't bother. <laughs> Next. It is not fair, ma'am. You're always the one for complaining. Here have I knitted four sweaters for 36-inch busts, and she's been let off with a 32. There's only a few stitches extra. It is not the same work, ma'am. Quiet. 
You're quite right, my dear. We'll pay a shilling extra for the 36s and a shilling less for the 32s. Next. We're in a bad way for wool, ma'am. We've shorn every sheep on the island. Every sheep? Mabel, what's the stock position? Getting rather low. There are no more sheep. How much wool do we still need? Five pounds of wool per sheep. If each sheep provides one and three quarter sweaters, how many sheep will... Uh, let X equal the number of sheep. Now, if we were to... Quiet, dear. I need to do a quadratic equation. A hundred X over four plus... If there are no more sheep, we shall be 52 sweaters short. Well, we must keep our promise and complete the order. What have we heard from Michael Kavanagh? There's nothing down here. Has he no sheep? Well, his sheep are over in Inishkar, the little island. He keeps them there for the summer grazing. Have them sent over. Well, there's no one to send them. No one lives on the little island. Patrick! Whenever you want a man around here, just shout Patrick and you'll get a dozen. Eight, not enough. Michael! Take boats and fetch me the sheep from the little island. At once, and no fishing on the way. Oh, it'll be a hard row, man, with that tide against us. Call yourselves men. Get me a couple of oars and I'll go myself. <laughs> You're on a holiday, sir? No. Oh, you'd be the gentleman that's come to inspect the lighthouse. No. You're here for the bird watching, maybe? No. Do you know Mr. Joseph McDonough? No. Sir, if you're going ashore, I'd come before the pegs are not after him. Priority, exports. Can you tell me, where is Mr. McDonough's house? Oh, there'll be plenty to show you. Though, if you do see Mr. McDonough himself, you'll be the first man who has. It seems a long way. Is there not a cart I can hire? There's only one wheel in the island, and that's a wheelbarrow. Would you like an ass now? Yes, please. We get Mrs. Boland's. He's a great ass, that one. He pitched the mayor of Galway head over heels into the sea. No, thank you. We should put all the money we make together and buy a pump for the village. A pump? Aye, a pump would be great progress. I saw one once on the mainland. You work the handle up and down, and the water comes forth like out of the spout of a teapot. Very well, we'll pool the money and we'll buy a pump. <whistles> Knock off, everybody! Back shop on time tomorrow, please. Next. My name is Twig. I'm looking for Mr. McDonough. I'm his solicitor from Dublin. Mr. Twig. Mr. McDonough has told us so much about you. Welcome to Inish Father. that sometimes a sheep seems to call with the voice of a man. Listen to that one now. You swear to he was calling out for help? And who in the world might you be? Thank you no more. That was excellent. And now, if I am to catch the steamer back, I really think I had better see Miss McDonough at once. Yes, I'm only afraid his illness might be uh, infectious. It looked to me this morning very like mumps. More whiskey. I have had the mumps. Uh, just a small one, please. One can have it twice, you know. Second time's worse. You swell up all over. Something dreadful. In my profession, one sometimes has to take risks. <clears throat> all interested in the history and folklore of this island. Oh, of course, but uh, just at the moment, I... Well, if you will look on the hill there, you will see the Dun or prehistoric fort. There has been some dispute as to its origins, but it seems certain that it was constructed by a race known as the Fur Bones, uh, which has been variously translated as Potbellies. 
or bag carriers. Now, in 600 BC... Are you fond of Italian opera? Oh, it's terrible the way he drops cigar ash all over his waistcoat. Ladies, I have come here to see Mr. McDonough. Very well. If you insist, I will see how he feels. Mr. Twig is here from Dublin. He wants to see you. He says it's urgent. Turn that bum to get you hell out of here. I'm so sorry. He regrets he can see no one. McDonough, this is important. Perhaps we can help. We always handle all his affairs. How long have you known Mr. McDonough? Yes and yes. For life, really. Are you relatives of his? Oh, yes, we are his nieces. Goodness, look at the time. You'll have to hurry if you're going to catch that steamer. On second thoughts, I think I'll stay the night. We, we haven't a spare bed. I'll get a room at the public house. Part of my business here is the drafting of your uncle's will. I don't suppose he's made one already, has he? What do you mean? It's not unknown for relatives to persuade sick, elderly and wealthy gentlemen to put something foolish down on paper. Are you accusing us of trying to get his money? I'll give you five seconds to open that door. One, two, three, four, five. Very well. There are few amenities on this island, but there is a policeman. It's all over. There's only one thing to do. Own up and take what's coming. We must tell him. No. Yes, Rosie. No. That's still the steamer to the mainland. And if we hurry, we can just make it. Look what we've done on this island, the three of us. And if we've done it once, we can do it again. Somewhere else, somewhere new. I don't mind if we start selling ice cream to the Eskimos. I'm not giving in. She's right. Dora, when we first ran away, you were always the best of us. Don't give up now. Remember my idea about making little boxes out of shells? And Madam Dora promised. All right. If you're game, so am I. <laughs> There's the rock I fell from. Oh, you must be a great swimmer indeed to reach in his garden. Uh -huh. They say a drowning man will clutch at a straw. It was an empty oil drum I clutched at. I held on like a limpet, and the tide took me to the other island. Do you know what I've lived on the last fortnight? Oh. Gulls' eggs, cockles, mussels, winkles, seaweed. <coughs> Fun. Yes, sir. Very nice. Oh, very nice indeed. Did the three ladies do all this? Well, some of the men came along and gave him a hand, sir. Oh, were they paid for it? Oh, they were paid in advance. <laughs> With sore heads from the night before. Where did they get the sore heads from? Well, a couple of dozen bottles of John Patrick's Irish whiskey. John Pat... a couple of do... That was Joseph McDonough's Irish whiskey. It's gone. We've had it. Now we really have had it. I've always been interested in prison reform. Now I shall see the problem from the inside. I thought we might be put on probation. I've been on probation. I'll be inside all right. Don't worry, Rosie. We'll come with you. Whatever happens, we'll stick together. I'll give you a hand with your mailbags, Rosie. <laughs>
carefully arranged. Do you know, I couldn't have done it better myself. Now, come along. Come and tell me more about these three nieces of mine. <laughs> Never have a piano again. I got a harmonium in all the way. I'm not going down like this, whimpering and sniveling. Come on, girls, let's show them what we are made of. Alive, oh, alive, oh, the devil is easily king. Alive, oh, alive, oh, all alive, king, king. All alive, oh, all alive, alive. Everybody in that can run as an Irish in the eye. All alive, oh, all alive. Acting upon information I have received. Acting upon information I have received. Have you a warrant? To search, ma'am. To put us inside? You need three. Well, I must warn you that anything you say may be taken down and used in evidence. Take down anything you like. You're looking for Mr. McDonough. As you can see, he isn't here. I have to confess to concealing a death, to acquiring goods and services under false pretenses. Ah, my little niece, come in and talk to me. That's no McDonough, that's no McDonough. That's Joseph Connealy. He ran away to America 50 years ago. I can still see the nick with the gold pieces here on the day of his first communion. His father and two boys from the island were drowned. For he went off without a word to a soul. Ah, that's who I am. And I've come back to the place where I was born with the idea of doing something to help. Buy a new pump for the village, maybe, or start an industry. Mm. But I see my uh, my three nieces here have already put the island on its feet. And you know, ladies, this is the first time I've had all the buttons on all my pyjamas. And this is the best beef stew I ever tasted in my life. There's not too much onion in it. Oh, no, it's just perfect. We added a little wild thyme for flavouring. Ah, that's what I like, a wild thyme. <laughs> and whoever said a handsome woman couldn't cook? You said we've put this island on its feet. We haven't, you know. We need help. More sheep. And motor boats. And a machine for spinning. And you might have some useful contacts in New York. We could earn some dollars. You see that guy over there with the look on his face like a turkey that swallowed a duck? That's my lawyer. I say, can you draw up the articles of association for a limited company? Certainly, if you wish it. I do. I shall be chairman, and the directors will be... Uh, well, you better ask my three nieces their names. A drifting motorboat, an umbrella. There's a memorial service to us this afternoon. How very kind. We must send a donation. <laughs> I suppose this is the first time you formed a company with three directors, all of them deceased. Not at all. In my experience, most boards of directors have been dead for years. When someone dies on the island, it's the custom for friends and relations to sit up all night for the corpse. And when I was a boy, we'd open a barrel for company. Well, you can't celebrate anything well, be it birth, death, or marriage, without a little moisture. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tap three barrels tonight, one for each of them. <laughs> I met my love one dreamy summer's day. On Orlick's Cannon Bay, her eyes of blue, they beg 
coming back from the dead and missing his own party. Will you let me get up now? You're to stay here at least for a week. And no nonsense. Now, look, I'm your uncle. You'll please show me a little respect. Well, you can keep me in bed, but you shan't stop me singing. So they say... No, no. For someone else in all this Pills, my pills. Oh, oh. Well, don't stand there like a doorpost. Fetch some water. Some water. That's it. Everybody's welcome, long as the virus in the eye. 